when we get into ketosis, right, it's a signaling molecule that's going to tell us to switch into fat burning mode. But that can be difficult, right? If you're if, if you're metabolically inflexible, then you, you can't switch or it's difficult to switch. So you talk about that in the book, and I'd like to kind of dive into that a little bit. So why is it difficult? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, normally, mitochondria should be able to use both sugar as a fuel, glucose, to generate ATP, or burn free fatty acids um, as a fuel to generate ATP. And normally they should be able to make that switch virtually instantaneously, very much like a hybrid car. Uh, when you're burning gasoline, let's call that glucose, you could charge your battery. And then when you run out, and we'll call your battery fat, and then when you run out of gasoline, you can immediately switch over to battery power and start burning you know, the battery's fat, if you will. Unfortunately, as I talk about in the book, research shows that 50% of normal weight individuals have no metabolic flexibility, have no ability to make the switch. 88% of overweight individuals have no ability to make the switch. And 99% of obese individuals have no ability to make the switch. Now that's really important because if you're switching to eliminating carbohydrates, sugars, or proteins that convert into sugar and switching to a high fat diet, most individuals can't actually utilize the fat that they're eating or the fat in their cells because of this metabolic inflexibility. And oftentimes, weeks, months can pass before a hormone called insulin falls enough to allow free fatty acids to be released from fat cells. And again, we have to have free fatty acids for the liver to generate ketones, except for one nice trick, which I expound on in the book about MCT oils, which are a workaround, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So a couple of things on the inflexibility. One is how could we tell? Because we could be, because 50% of ordinary, uh, of like ordinary weight, people are inflexible. So how can we tell? And is there, what would be the quickest way to develop it? Yeah. So interestingly enough, uh, there are very easy ways to tell whether you have metabolic flexibility. The simplest way is a blood test looking at fasting insulin levels. And it's in the United States is an $8 blood test. Um, and it's very different than hemoglobin A1C. Many people see, oh, I got my A1C down. Um, hemoglobin A1C in general looks at how we're handling sugars and proteins for the two months prior to the test. But insulin is the hormone that handles the sugars and proteins we eat. And it's basically a salesperson that takes sugar and protein and knocks on the muscle cell door and says, hey, this person just ate some sugar or protein at a great meal. Open the door. I want to sell you this. And muscles normally should be hungry. And they go, oh, great. You know, come on in. I'll buy it. Most of us, unfortunately, our muscles are full because quite frankly, we eat 16 hours a day and we don't exercise very much. And so the muscles are stuffed. So when insulin comes and tries to sell the muscles, couldn't eat another bite. There's no room in here. Go somewhere else. Insulin basically doesn't take that laying down and comes back with more and more insulin friends and tries to shove sugar and protein into the muscle cells and the muscle cells shove back. That's called insulin resistance. Now what's fascinating design is insulin is a fat storage hormone. So that when our insulin level goes up and up, we store more and more of the food we eat as fat. Now the 
normally you'd think if we stopped eating, then run out of sugar and protein, then we should have that battery and the battery should release the fat. Unfortunately, insulin blocks the ability of fat cells to reduce, to release fat. So when most of us with metabolic inflexibility have an elevated insulin level. And so when we stop eating or we go on a high fat diet, the insulin keeps the fat cells from releasing fat. So it's kind of like water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. There's plenty of that, but you can't get to it. It's all locked away. Okay. So with a couple of things in there. So one is what could we do to, to try and start things moving? And if there's no sugar, then what's your brain going to eat because you're not creating any ketones? Bingo. And that's actually one of the main drivers for the epidemic of memory loss and dementia that we're seeing. What we're learning now is that the brain normally, after about eight hours of not eating, the brain should begin using ketones as a fuel, but ketones have to come from the liver by created from free fatty acids. And when there's no free fatty acids, the liver can't make ketones and the brain literally starves to death. Um, and, and starves to death every night because it actually can't get the fuel it needs. And that's one of the wake up calls that most of us should heed. In fact, there's, there's very good data that people in their 50s and 60s with insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, elevated insulin levels have a dramatic memory loss in their 70s and 80s compared to people who have you know, metabolic flexibility. So if that isn't a wake-up call uh, for our brain, I, I don't know what is. Again, it's one thing getting old, but if we don't have our brains, uh, not much purpose in getting old. So to answer your second part of the question, there are ways around this. Uh, it turns out that a lot of people have heard of MCT oil, medium chain triglycerides. Uh, MCT oil is a, a component of coconut oil, but it's actually a very small component of coconut oil. What's unique about MCT oils is that they're unlike any other fat in that they're absorbed directly through the wall of our intestines. Fats otherwise aren't absorbed that way. And they go directly into our liver. Uh, do not pass go, do not collect $200. And they're converted into ketones. So the amazing thing about MCTs is you may not be able to release fat from your fat cells, but just taking a tablespoon of MCT oil will actually have you generate ketones that can actually protect your brain. So the, the beauty of my program in Unlocking the Keto Code is that we can get MCTs as liquid MCTs, but also it's kind of a fun fact, um, medium chain triglycerides are named after the Latin word for goat, which is capra. So there's capric acid, caprylic acid, and so far. And you go, well, why would MCTs be named after a goat? And it turns out that goat milk has a lot of medium chain triglycerides, as does sheep milk. Now, cow's milk doesn't. So you can actually get the benefit of MCTs by having goat milk or sheep milk or goat yogurt or sheep yogurt or goat or sheep kefir or goat and sheep cheese. So what a wonderful way to generate ketones by having some good tasting food. Right. So I, I did see it that uh, you need like, so I think you suggested like 30, 30 grams of uh, MCT oil. Yeah. Uh, would, would you be able to get that from cheese uh, or, or would a supplement be better? Well, so it, interestingly enough, about 30% uh, of the calories 
in goat and sheep cheese is MCT. So it's, uh, it's a remarkably good source of MCT oil. But for instance, a, a tablespoon of liquid MCT is about, is about 30 grams. So, and it's so easy, you can either take it, it has no flavor, you can mix it in, with olive oil or other oils and put it on a salad. You can put it on vegetables, you can put it on fish, and you wouldn't know it's there, which makes it really easy to use. Right. Actually, I saw that your first recipe was something that looked very much like um, bulletproof coffee without the butter. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it turns out that the butter, uh, and Dave Asprey is my friend, and butter really has a tiny bit of butyric acid, butyrate. That's actually where butter gets its name. Um, but you're much better off using goat yogurt or goat cheese, mixing what I call a cappuccino uh, instead of a bulletproof coffee and put some MCT oil in it. And yeah, that's uh, one of my first recipes in the book. That's yeah. delicious. Yes, I'm definitely going to try that. 